tools from Travel Time in QGIS allow you to really configure uh, the nuts and bolts of the analysis you want to be running. And we have an advanced tool or an advanced version of each of the three key tools. So uh, we have an advanced uh, time map tool for creating isochrones, an advanced routes tool for creating routes, and an advanced time filter tool for filtering locations into reachable and unreachable based on travel time, and also calculating um, travel times between lots of origins and lots of destinations. I'm just going to show you um, how one of these works, which is the advanced time map tool. Because yeah, what I show you here will be basically um, similarly relevant to the, the routes and the time filter tool. So it looks slightly different to um, the simple time map tool, uh, but actually a lot of it is, is very similar. There are two sets of fields that we can fill in, um, and we basically have to just choose one set. So we either fill in these departure fields, or we fill in these arrival fields. So the departure fields would be creating isochrones um, for journeys that leave these locations at this time, and how far can we get? Arrival would be to arrive at these locations at this time. Um, where could we have set off from, uh, with given the, the travel time to get to those um, arrival destinations? So we're going to do departure here. So we don't want any layer in this um, arrival searches. We want to use this departure searches. So we'll select our layer. Let's run it on this um, 10 locations layer. And here we can choose an ID from that um, 10 locations to use as the kind of unique identifier um, in that output. So this is a, a really good way if you're creating lots of isochrones to be able to really easily identify them in the output. Um, this must be unique, by the way. So we'll choose the postcode field. Uh, again, we can choose type of transport, a departure time, um, a maximum travel time, so for creating that isochrone, uh, this is in seconds. So 900 is, is 15 minutes. Uh, if we wanted to do an hour, that would be 3,600. So we can ignore these arrival fields because that would be for an arrival search. We're just doing a departure search. As with the simple tool, we can choose how to uh, view this, these isochrones. So normal is one isochrone around each point union would dissolve them into um, into one shape, sort of the, the total reachable area, and intersection would just show you any areas, if any, that are reachable from all of those points. We'll run it as normal for now. And then under this um, advanced parameters um, sort of drop down, there are a whole load of other fields that we can we can tinker with. And again they're split into departure fields and arrival fields and we're doing a departure search so we're only interested in these departure ones they're all pre-populated with um, some default values that we think are sensible values um, and these are also the values that are are sort of used in the background when running um, the simple tools or the, the quick tools out of the toolbar um, these these advanced parameter values are the ones that will be used most of these are, um, are appropriate for, for public transport. Uh, and if you want a full list of how these all work, just um, yeah, go into our documentation or there's a, a description on the, on the right-hand side here. But to give you an example, um, this walking time field, this says for a public transport journey, how long do you allow someone to walk um, both from their departure point to the first public transport, bus, stop, or train station. And then similarly, from the final um, stop or station, walking to their destination. So this is 15 minutes, but if you were running some analysis, say in a more rural area, and you wanted people to actually be able to walk further before getting on public transport, and to walk further at the other end, you could just increase this value. And yeah, the same goes for all of these all of these different parameters that you can configure. We also have this um, departure search range width field. And what this does is rather than saying 
Currently, we have a departure time um, of four o'clock. If we wanted to set a departure window, so we want to say, we still want to have a one hour travel time, but we want to pick up any journeys that leave between four o'clock and five o'clock. So we, we're not saying specifically four o'clock, we want a more general idea of what public transport journeys are available at that time of day. We can put, if we put an hour into here, so 3,600 seconds, that would give us, um, it would calculate any, any journeys that set off between four and five, and it will therefore create a, a larger isochrone because it will consolidate all of those potential journeys into a total reachable area. And the other thing we can configure in this advanced tool is this field to keep option. Again, only for departure, the one we're looking at for now. And in here we can select, these are all the um, fields in that input layer we're using. And if there are any of these that we want to retain in the attribute table um, of, the, of the isochrones, we can just select them here. So it just makes it easier to identify those isochrones um, in the attribute table. So yeah, if we just select a couple of those. And let's run this. So using a departure search uh, does make it slightly slower. Um, just because it's got more, yeah, more routes to test, but still, still very quick. So we now have our reachable area isochrones, and if we open up our attribute table, this is where we can see, first of all, that the ID is now uh, the postcode that we selected to use as the departure ID. And we have those two fields that we decided to keep. So the departure location ID and again that postcode field that we ticked. So you could have as many as many fields as you like from the input um, here to just help you identify which of these isochrones is which. This um, properties is only walking field is identifying whether um, that isochrone is just a walking isochrone or not. So in the case that you try and run a public transport isochrone in an area where there's no access to public transport, it will essentially just return a walking shape because you're still allowed to walk for whatever that value we set as the walking value was, so 15 minutes. So you'll get a 15 minute walking area, but this is just showing you that if it said true, that would mean it's an isochrone, but it's just walking. There's actually no public transport being used, but these are all false, which means all of these isochrones are actually using public transport. And that's how to use the advanced parameters. Um, most of them are very similar for the advanced routes tool and the advanced time filter tool.